Ted Those are eight combatants for the Fields K1 World Grand Prix.
Simi Shield to address the audience here and give an introductory speech, the two-time and defending K1 World Grand Prix champion. I, Sam Shield, on behalf of all the fighters, will do the best to show our K1 spirit to all the fans and the audience here in this dome. So all of our eight fighters on stage here at the sold out Yokohama Arena. It is certainly a happening, the biggest martial arts and fight event on the front of the field's K1 World Grand Prix. And our fighters will head backstage and we will be ready for reserve fight number one shortly. The atmosphere here at the Yokohama Arena, you can cut it with a chainsaw, it is electrifying. There is nothing else like it in all the world of sports. And wouldn't it be something special if Peter Ertz or Jerome Rabanne could come through here tonight and give the sentimental fans what they want? Or will it be the bad boy, Badahari? Backstage. It is arguably the strongest lineup in K1 Grand Prix history. The eight best on the planet will choose it out to find out who is the K1 King of Kings for 2007. The 15th installment of the K1 World Grand Prix. It's only ever been won by seven different fighters. Brought stay that way here tonight, or will we see a new champion? Will we see? Champion number eight. The giant screens, the towers, the lights, the pyrotechnics, and it's all part of the trademark of the K1 World Grand Prix. And there go my eardrums. Reserve fight coming up. It's Australia versus the US of A. Mighty Mo with Old Glory flying in the corner takes on Paul Slewinski from Adelaide, South Australia. This is the battle between the hand of Mighty Mo that have knocked out so many opponents. And here in this very ring on March 4th, he became the first man in history, the only man in history, to knock out the giant Hongman Choi with that very shot. The overhand right. How will Slowinski stay out of range of the thunderous hands of the wrecking ball, Mighty Mo? Winner of the K1 World Grand Prix in Honolulu on April 28. And here's the European champion, Paul Slowinski. He shocked Europe in June when he won the K1 Amsterdam tournament. Former K1 Oceania champion. And what a year Slowinski has had with his trainer, his mentor, the legendary Ernesto Hoos. All the combinations of Hoos be apparent in the new crowd skills and work rate of Slowinski here tonight. Slowinski and Marty Murray in our reserve fight. Tonight's event continues with Fields K1 World Grand Prix 2007 Final Reserve Fight Match. Enter the ring tonight from the blue stage, Paul Slowinski.
centre in. The greatest of greats, Ernesto, who's there with Paul Sawinski, the four-time champion. And what a moment this is, Ray, for Paul Sawinski. It was going to be you here tonight, we should have cheered, we're over it now. And it's a huge drop though for Paul and the Oceania region. I got over it, did I say I was over it? No, no, absolutely. I mean, Paul Sawinski, this is a great opportunity for him. He's got to come out here and take advantage of every single thing that he's been working on and actually come out and, you know, put on a good show and win it. Slowinski well, coming off a crushing second round KO loss against Simi Shulky Sol back on September 29. He had that magnificent victory in Amsterdam in June where he beat Hiromi Amada, Sabi Samadov and Bjorn Bergi all by stopping to become the K1 European champion. And a big start from South Australia. There is now based out of Amsterdam and Team Perfect and Esther Houston, Gerald Minitan. The former three-time World Muay Thai champion and light heavyweight, cruiserweight and heavyweight in true Muay Thai fashion goes over the top rope. And now, making his way to the ring from the red stage, Mighty! with Ernesto Houston in his corner. Ernesto will be joining us in commentary later on. Three by three minute rounds. One extra round in case of a draw. A winner's decided KO, TKO or judge's decision. And will it be the Aussie or the American going through? Six foot three at 235 pounds of Paul Slowinski. Six one, 280 of Mighty Mo. And I'll tell you what, folks. Slowinski has to stay away from the overhand right of Mighty Mo. This guy punches hard. You know, Ray, I've been to Mighty Mo's house in Los Angeles 
he punches so hard, it doesn't have windows. When he wants to let it breeze in, he just punches a hole in the wall. <laughs> so that's where he does all his training. <laughs> You can see the height advantage here on Slawinski. He's also got the reach over Mighty Mo. Have a look at the stare down on the kisser of Mighty Mo. This guy could beat the sun in a staring contest. And we are ready. Our official reserve fight. The voice Michael Chevallo and Sugar Ray Sefo and Akebono with your inside from the sold out Yokohama Arena in Japan. First round of action, Slewinski in the red, Mo in the black and blue, and Slewinski already opening up with the heavy artillery, the trademark outside right hit, Mo goes for the overhand right. This is not where Slewinski wants to be, Ray, no, stuck in the corner. No, he doesn't want to be there. I mean, as you were saying earlier, Mighty Mo can't throw those big overhand rights and over and lift hooks, so he does I mean, right now, this is exactly what he needs to be doing. If Mighty Mo catches Slewinski with that overhand right, Slewinski's going to starve to death rolling. And at the moment, the big stud is doing a good job with the outside thigh kicks. Another cracking one to the lead quadricep area of Mighty Mo. He is taking apart that lead leg, Akebono. Yes, that's exactly what he had to do. It looks like that's his game plan. Stohoust in the corner, shouting instructions at Slowinski. Nice high guard there from Slowinski. So Mo goes to the body. Slowinski gives him a crack on the hamstring. Three minute rounds. First minute down. And Slowinski doing a stellar job here, Ray. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, he's doing exactly what he needs to do to win this fight. Uh, Mighty Mo up to a beautiful combination. I think he got caught with that short overhand right. But Mighty Mo is he jumping him right now? That's a beautiful right. short leg hooking close there that tagged Mighty Mo on the jaw to Akibana. He's cut, oh, he's cut. cut over the right eye, is Slowinski. And Esto Hoos is going to have a look at this one. He's got the Vaseline in hand, the ringside physician. Paul Slewinski to the neutral corner in front of our commentary position. It doesn't, just trying to gather where it is. If it's on the eye, it looks the same as your cut race. Yeah, it does actually. Very, very similar. Here's how it went down. The overhand right was top of the head. And there it is, oh. left hook from Mighty Mo. And Paul was opened up instantly. But, you know, just before that, Mighty Mo threw a three, four punch combination and actually put him on the ropes. And I think it, you know, kind of started from there. And then the last overhand right, uh, Paul's okay to go on. He's had worse cuts in shaving as the former three-time world Muay Thai champion. And he picks up where he left off, cracking away to the lead thigh of Mighty Mo. Outside Mo thigh to kick. Absolutely. Mighty Mo needs to jump on him and just smother him right now, just like what he's doing right now. And then he needs to change angles because as soon as he steps back, possibly he's going to throw that leg. I am really surprised that in Paul's experience, Mighty Mo has still not learned how to check a low kick right. <laughs> Especially when every opponent knows to let kick Mighty Mo, you think they'd incorporate that into his defense. Well, there's a kickboxing fight, you know what I mean? It's K-1, so, you know, these are the things that are the best things that you need to work on. Slowinski at the moment. A flawless leg kick in this play. Oh. There's the lead, the last target! Slowinski makes it back on the hand, cuts the move train! Slowinski was tagged, the legs almost gave way. He's a tough one though, the big stud from Saudi Arabia. What's going on here? That should have been an eight count. Why did the referee count? Why did the referee stop there and then suddenly continue the fight? Slowinski's got to move. He cannot stand in front of Mighty Mo. The uppercut almost took out the ring lights. Mighty Mo going for the cranium cracker. Slowinski is still a little rattled from the handiwork of Mighty Mo. There's the point time there, nice invasion from Slowinski. Let's just hope Mighty Mo doesn't punch himself out. Outside thigh kick, 20 seconds remaining here, first round of three by three. For the official reserve fighter status. Mojo punches out for the border. The little Mo's getting a rattle around. You know that's dangerous, Ray, because Mo's got like 28 kicks. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I think Paul just did him a favor. He's allowed to breathe now. <laughs> How do you see it so far, Akebono? It's really been the legs of Paul against the hands of Mo as we expected. Well, that's what we talked about before the fight started. Um, uh, both of them are using the, what they do best to their advantage. And as you can see, Mighty Mo catch you with a left hook and he'll, he'll cut you harder than when you shave. <laughs> that, that cut over the right eye, it is identical to your cut, Ray. That's freaky. But that cut now and the blood dripping down the right side of the eye of Slowinski is like waving a red curtain in front of a charging bull. Mo's going to go after that in the second round. Hey, he blocked the lick again. 
He must have heard us. We are talking pretty loud here inside. Nice outside cry. He comes to the End of the first round, we go to the towels. First of all, Yokozuna Akibono, how do you score the first round? Well, in the beginning, uh, the, the, Mo, Mo looked like he was, uh, had a hard time getting started up, but after he caught him with that left hook, he, 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 he looked like he grabbed a piece of the fight. Ray Ray? I thought Marty Mo got hard done by, by, by the referee there. He, he, I don't know, I mean, Paul, he, Paul was hurt, so the referee jumped in, you figured that would have been an eight count. Otherwise, he would have, you know, he should have allowed Marty Mo to actually continue the attack. If, you had to give, if, I, have, if I have to give a winner that round, I would give it to Marty Mo. I have to agree that Mo can feel very unfortunate not to have scored a 10-8 standing count on Paul Lewinsky. Other than that flurry from Mo, for mine it was pretty much Lewinsky dominating the round with the leg kicks, but it should have been a standing count for Mighty Mo. Interestingly here, both men choosing to stand between rounds and not take a seat, and we are ready to rock and roll second round of three. They have vast up the eye of Slewinski. And that also raises the question that if Slewinski does beat Mo here and become the reserve fighter, could he possibly continue with a cut like that? Mo's grimacing here, Ray. Have a look at his face as Paul goes to the inside and outside leg fight. He's looking like, you know, he's feeling those kicks and right now Mighty Mo's only option is to stick in there, smother Paul and throw those bombs. Lewinsky, who has trained like a demon for this one. I had breakfast with him this morning and he said, Mikey, I've never trained as hard in my life as I have for tonight. And Mo goes down from the leg kicks. Lewinsky's trademark weapon. Some of the hardest leg kicks in the business. A drop Murray shakes his head. Is it all over? There's one hand and the towel is there in Mo's corner. Mo can't go on. It's all over. And the Aussie has won it. The second round. TKO for Paul Slowinski. The Aussie is through as the official reserve fighter. Akebono, it was always going to be the case. The late kicks that Mo does not check. Well, that's what we, we spoke about before the fight. Take away a punch's power is you take away his base. And I believe, Ray, as we've said a lot this year, that Mo again proved himself as a very one-dimensional fighter. Oh, absolutely. I mean... <laughs> To be able to compete in the top level, you got to be versatile in what you do in the ring and also and also in training. And I mean, like he's supposed to be working with guys who are supposed to be Muay Thai trainers, and so therefore he's got to learn how to kick. Otherwise, this is exactly what's going to happen. A result like just a guy like Paul who will just hammer away until the time's up. Well, jubilation, no doubt, for our many fans watching live on main event in Australia. I'll be loving seeing the. Big star Paul Slowinski just chop out the legs of Mighty Mo. I've been watching Slowinski do that for years. When he was a light heavyweight back in the day, then a cruiserweight, when he first moved to heavyweight. And how he has come along in leaps and bounds, Ray, seems hooking up with the greatest of all, the master strategist, the genius Ernesto Hoost. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, Paul has been a, a good, strong, strong fighter. And now, you know, training with Ernesto Hoost, <laughs> you can only improve and get better. If you could measure fighting ability and training ability with an IQ, well, Ernesto would be about 198. He'd be inducted into Mensa, that's for sure. So congratulations there for Ernesto and Paul Slowinski. Commiserations for Mighty Mo. But when you face a leg kicker, a slinger like Slowinski, you don't check the cheat, you check the kicks. It really is just a matter of time before you find the canvas. And here comes the big Polak. Well done, Paul. One for the Aussies. And what a huge opportunity for Slowinski over Mighty Mo. Just having a look around this arena here at the Bono. It really is an amazing sight. We are sold out 20,000 at the Yokohama Arena. Just so exciting, isn't it? Yes, you can feel the energy in this, in this room right now. I'll tell you what, though, look at Mo. He's not feeling much energy at all at the moment, Ray. No, he's not. You know, but let's go, I mean, if we were to go back to when the referee actually stepped in, you know, the, the result might have been different. Uh, so, in, in a sense, I feel for him because I thought he was very hard done by. So, the busiest fighter of 2007, who is also scheduled to fight on New Year's Eve Dynamite, you've got to wonder now if he can shape up for an MMA fight in three weeks' time against Sergei Karinatov. Folks, 
We're almost ready to kick off our tournament here tonight. The first of our quarterfinals. It is going to be something special. Jerome Labana rock and roll against the hulking humanity that is Hong Man Joy. One that I'm super excited about. I'm sure you're super excited about it as well. Wherever you're watching, we have been broadcasting over 110 countries around the world. The biggest fight event on the planet, the Super Bowl of stand-up fighting the fields. K1 Royal Grand Prix. Hopefully they can go to work on the cut of Slowinski. That's safe. And Jerome LeBanner versus Hong Meng Choi. Quarter final number one rock and roll versus the human skyscraper. This is going to be an absolute cracker. As we said earlier on in our pre fight preview, LeBanner is in awesome shape. Last time these two men met in Osaka in 2006, it went an exception round, and Jerome Lavanna won by a decision. He said the fighting joy was like fighting a brick wall, but the leg kicks had no effect whatsoever on the giant hot man joy. And it's been a very year for Choi this year. He was knocked out here in Yokohama. On March the 4th by Mighty Moe. Could this be a bad omen place for Hong Man Choi? Jerome LeBanner, who is famed as having the highest KO ratio in K1 history. A staggering 83% knockout ratio for rock and roll, Jerome LeBanner. And he has had so much attention on him this week, LeBanner. French TV and Eurosport following his every move. He's been training like a team and that's how he qualified by knocking out Dong Su Park in one round in Seoul on September 29. He made it easy and he did the same against Joy. How do you fight and beat a man who is 7 foot 3, who is 160 kilos? How did you ride a bike that small? He is a monster. It is scary standing next to him. And in recent interviews, Hot Man Choi saying he doesn't want to go the distance with Lavanna. He doesn't want to fancy his chances in our points in Lavanna. He wants to knock the snot out of rock and roll inside of two rounds. Final number one, Labanna versus Troy. The winner to take on either Schilt or Beethoven. And there's rock and roll backstage getting ready to come out. We are joined by the greatest four-time K1 champion and a man who is very happy at the moment, Ernesto Hoos. Ernesto, great to be back again with your inside. Congratulations on Paul Flaminski. Polinski is backstage after a cracking second round win over Mighty Mo. He did it well on this day. I'm uh, very uh, pleased by the way he, uh, he fought. Um, I hope the cut is not too deep uh, because uh, in this form, uh, I think it will be uh, very good to, uh, to, to, end, to enter the K1 Grand Prix with somebody falls out. Well, certainly, we're all very proud of Slovenskin, how far he has come. And have a look at rock and roll backstage. I told you he was ripped, he was stripped, and he was striated. And he hasn't let us down. Jerome LeBanna and Hong Man Choi in quarterfinal number one. Good evening and welcome. Nippon no K1 fan no Minasama Kon Bangwa. We welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to the Yokohama Arena here in Yokohama, Japan, here on the sacred grounds of Fight Sports' most prestigious event, the Field K1 World Grand Prix 2007 Finals. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to begin. 
It's time for the Fields K-1 World Grand Prix 2007 quarterfinal bout one. And now, ladies and gentlemen, joining us from the blue stage, hailing from Korea, please welcome Hong Man Choi! Oh, absolutely. 
Skyscraper, have a look at the stare down here. Our Fuji TV counterparts also ringside. Labana versus Choi, it's a happening. Akabona, you fought Choi twice. He's a hard man, Labana's gonna pounce on him. Uh, Labana has the experience, uh, he beat him once, he should know what to do. And we are ready, three by three minute rounds. Quarter final number one, Hongman Choi versus Labana. It's a happening. The voice, Michael Chavello, ringside with Sugar Ray Seppel, Akibono, and the greatest, Ernesto Hoost. Jerome Labana opens up the overhand left. He is a southpaw fighter. And Hongman Choi, who earlier this year switched from orthodox to fighting southpaw. And we usually to see if he stays in southpaw here. So not he's gone to orthodox at the moment, has the massive Choi. I like what Jerome's doing right now, changing angles. No standing still in front of him. That was a beautiful straight right down the middle when we first started. So he's doing the right game. I mean, he's obviously sticking to his game plan. That is exactly the game, the game plan that he used to stick to right throughout the fight. Jerome Labana has those powerful hands. I once saw this man slam the revolving door. That's how powerful he is. An 83% KO ratio for Jerome Labana. A 58% KO ratio for Hong Man Choi. Choi just stalking Labana. Look at the massive size difference between the two. Labana, who's been training in Paris in preparation for this one, his trainer's been standing on a crate. To <laughs> give Labana, it is true, standing on a crate to match the height of Hongman Choi. Labana is trained jumping up and hooking the pads. I see Labana faint a little bit more. Buy some jabs and do exactly that, you know? Try and use his hands a little bit more because that's where his strongest points are. I mean, he can't kick, but try and face uh, Hamak Choi a little bit and then go back downstairs. At the moment, a very tentative round here by both men. And it's Hong Man Choi on the offensive, backing up Lebanon. Lebanon goes to the midsection, then goes for the overhand right. Trying to tag that massive jaw of Hong Man Choi that should have its own postal code that's that big. Glancing left hand there from Choi. Ernesto, how do you see the first round so far? Well, I see that Jerome is moving very good, scoring the most points. Um, yeah, doing the right thing at, the, at, the, at this moment. And if he keeps on uh, uh, doing that, then uh, it will be very difficult for, for him. Man. It's just hard to comprehend, folks, and to relay to you just how big Hong Man Choi is, seven foot three or 218 centimeters. There is already a large red welt under the right arm here of Hong Man Choi, courtesy of the kicks off the rear leg of Jerome Labana. Choi staying in orthodox stance here. Inside thigh kick from Labana. At yeah, this moment, Jerome is doing everything right. A very technical, a very cerebral thinking man's fight so far from Labana. Goes to the bread basket of Choi. High right now kick from Choi. Labana tries to kick oh. him, catch the kicking leg. 
end of the first round, Ernesto, who's how do you score it? Well, I score it through a banner, and uh, I think uh, if, I should, if I see the last action of Jerome uh, Hongman kicking and Jerome uh, uh, defending good and countering with a kick, with a punch, I'm sorry, uh, I think that is, that's the way, just the way uh, he fought the whole round. Akebona, your thoughts on who won the first? Uh, Lebana. Lebana, so that's two for Lebana. Ray Ray, do we have consensus? Absolutely, I'll go with Lebana also. Lebana is doing a fantastic job in there. This is, what he's doing right now is exactly what he needs to do. But what I like to see from him is after throwing that left body shot, come back with the right hook over the top and maybe adding another left, right hook on top of it as well. Instead of going to the left because it keeps him open with something else that might come to him, you know? We are ready to go. Second round set for three on Man Choi. The giant, the guy went swimming yeah. last week and Jack Lee's waiting for the start of firing harpoons at it. He's enormous. Here we go, second round of three, first round. Unofficially, we are giving the way of rock and roll, Jerome Labana. Troy keeping his guard nice and high. He knows Labana has dynamite in that next round. Well, yeah, that's exactly what he needs to do. That was fantastic. It's also about preservation in these tournament style fights. Labana knows what it takes to get to the final. He's been there a couple of times, last time in 2002. Steps up with the jab, gets underneath the wild right hand from Troy and moves back to center in. Good footwork from Jerome Labana. Well, that's what, uh, what, that, what I want to say. His footwork is amazing. He looks like he's 10 years younger. Troy was looking to pull the head down into the rising knee. See right now, Jerome's doing everything right. He doesn't need to rush anything because he is quicker than Han Bang Choi. So if he sticks to his game, he'll take this fight out. But like we were talked about earlier on, uh, Mike, like Anissa just commented, age is just a number. That is true. One of the oldest stunts in the game, LeBan. He smiles at Choi's attempt of a left uppercut. And a very clever fight from Jerome here in the second round. One minute 40 remaining. Nice ball. Oh. From Jerome Lavetta. There is a large Korean contingent here tonight for Hong Man Choi, but definitely the crowd support goes the way of the human refrigerator, Jerome Lavetta. He eats a left hand from Choi. I don't really want Jerome to be kicking on the inside that close because it puts him off balance and Hong Man Choi can just luck, land a lucky shot, you know? There's the glancing overhand right again from Lavetta. That's what Ray likes to see. Another problem with uh, <laughs> Lavana being close is that the punch doesn't actually come straight, it comes from the top. So it's like he's getting, he's getting hit on the top of the head instead of in the floor. Good point from the Yokozuna Akebono here with us inside. Lavana staying very mobile in center in. 45 seconds remaining. Lavana turns it! Big outside fly kick from the Frenchman. Choi plugs forward. He has so much power. And he's just too slow for Labana at the moment. Nice straight right hand. And that's what Jerome doesn't need to do, is stand in front of him like that. Well, Jerome's already got the ugliest nose in K1. He doesn't want <laughs> Choi to make it any more crooked. Actually, Choi might straighten it up for him. Labana <laughs> moves. 10 seconds remaining. Second round of action. Another good one for Jerome. Nice rib kick. That damage right side of the body of Hong Man Choi. A last second flurry looking for him. The kleptomaniac to steal it was Hong Man Choi. And yes, so who's had it just the second round? Well, not as, not as big as the first round, but also the second round has scored to uh, Jerome. He is just beating Hong Man Choi to the punch and the kick here, Akabono. Um, he, he looks comfortable, he, he knows what he has to do. Um, just hope he doesn't get too comfortable and like Ray said, he can get hit with something lucky. Ray Rad Hongman Choi, if you're in his corner, what are you telling Choi? To rush him and uh, try to steal the fight by, by making a knockdown or something because uh, the way it goes now is not going to win the fight. There is a lot of ground to cover here in the third round for Hongman Choi. Who will go through to semi-final number one? They touch gloves. And I agree with Anissa, what Anissa just said. I mean, like, right now, Homer Choi just needs to go for both. He needs to smother him, jump on him, push him around, and use his weight and height. Body shot from Labana. 
Oh, smack back to the jawline. Hong Man Choi doing a quick count of his teeth. Tagging right hook from the banner. And the banner is opened up like a house of fire here in the third round. Tags him again to the orbital brain and Choi says, come on, Jerome. Hong Man Choi must have heard us. <laughs> How could you not with the ears that size? Overhand right. Choi turns his back. Referee moves in. No count, he says. Referee just cautioning Choi to turn the back and warning Jerome not to hit the back of the head. LeBauer moving and grooving and center in, goes to the boiler room again. Loving left hook from Choi, still in orthodox stance. He hasn't switched to southpaw. LeBauer gets out of the way of the probing left hand. Goes for the body again. I must say, it's a long time ago I saw Jerome moving like that. Oh, smack back to the jawline once more. LeBan is going for the big kibosh. It would be something else if he knocks down Troy. One and a half minutes remaining here in the third round. My God, I mean, you know, and that's what's right. It's a, you know, we haven't seen Jerome, this Jerome, in a long time. And he's doing everything right. He's using his feet, he's pushing footwork, he's throwing touches from different angles, changing angles. He looks great in there. Jerome Lepana is owning Hong Man Choi in the final round. You can sign the pink slips. You can sign the ownership papers in this Yeah, round. but then he shouldn't become too overconfident to get a lucky punch, as Ray said before. Because he's uh, he doesn't take in the distance anymore. He's just doing the fight now. It's not just about showing the heart. Under 40 seconds remaining. Third and final round. Jerome Labana with more punch than a high school prom, and he still looks quite fresh. Just shrugs off Troy. Jab two from Labana moves and grooves. This is a great display from Rock and Roll. Can Troy do a Winona Ryder and steal it in the final 10 seconds? Goes for the high knee. I think your Winona would have been jealous of them. <laughs> final stage of the Rock and Roll is going to win it. Oh, we got it, Dr. Roll Labanda. Have a look around this place, Akebano. A huge ovation for Rock and Roll Jerome Labanda. Oh, yes, it is. Um... He was considered probably an underdog in this fight, but like we said before the fight, he is the greatest fighter not to win the championship yet. Ernesto, on your unofficial scorecard, a clean sweep for Jerome? Yeah, 30-27. And Sugar Ray? I would have to absolutely agree. I mean, Jerome did everything what he needed to do. Again, going back to what Ernesto said earlier, I'm, you know, it's the best we've seen him in a long time. He's definitely determined to win tonight. And that's how you beat a giant. And whichever way you cut it, that's what Choi is, a giant. Five centimetres taller, 12 kilos heavier than Nikolai Valuev. He's 15 centimetres taller, 42 kilos heavier than Tim Sylvia. The biggest combat athlete walking the planet today. How has been schooled by Jerome LeBanner. How much is he I've lost count. <laughs> He becomes the first man to qualify for the semi final for the film's K1 World Grand Prix 2007, and he did it in style. Lapana, who still looks relatively fresh, heads back to the dressing room. And for Hongman Choi, well, his second tilt and a K1 Grand Prix crown has gone no further than the last time. I want to reintroduce once again the greatest of all time, Ernesto Hoos. Ernesto, great to have you here inside. Jerome LeBanner is still looking relatively fresh for his semi final now. Yeah, of course, uh, we don't know uh, if he has pain or not. I mean, uh, a good fight never shows his pain. And. Uh, yeah, but as you see it now, uh, he looks quite fresh. He looks very well conditioned. 
And uh, actually, I never have seen him in this form, I think, ever. So, uh, yeah, if he fights like this, he will be a, a, a real contender for the, for the Grand Prix title. His footwork and his speed were truly amazing in centering. We're banner through to semi-final number one. We're ready for quarter-final number two. It's going to be the battle of the Karatekas, the two-time and defending K1 Grand Prix champion, also the world's super heavyweight K1 champion, Sibi Schultz of Holland, takes on the Gyokushin Commando, Lao Bay Bay Toza of Brazil. It will be the Brazilian kick, the trademark Moroshi Gerdi of Bay Toza, who was runner-up in the Grand Prix back in 2005, against the work rate and the strength of the strongest K1 champion of all time, Semi Schilt. Feitosa, who ventured to Brazil after defeating Carly Di Faust in Seoul, then he returned here to Tokyo three weeks ago, training out of T. Michigeki, and he takes on his nemesis, Semi Schilt. Two times these two men have met in the past. Two times Semi Schilt has emerged victorious, and that was the last time when he KO'd Feitosa. A sickening blow in the final of 2005. That was also here this year, the knockout against Ray Seffel. Semi Schultz who just uses his height to such great effect. His work rate is incredible. And you've really got to wonder how will Beethoven overcome the strongest champion in K1 history? The winner will face rock and roll, Jerome Lavanna in semi-final number one. Francisco Filio in the corner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, entering from the red stage from Holland, introducing Semi Shield. Thank you. 
two-time and defending K1 World Grand Prix champion, the world's super heavyweight champion, and arguably the strongest champion in K1 history. He doesn't walk, he stops his way to centering as only Semi Shilk can. The high tower from Holland with Dave Yonkers and Team Golden Glory in his corner. He is set to take on Raoui Beitoza for the third time. Have a look at the mean look on the kisser of the defending champion Semi Shilk, who tonight will try and make history by becoming K1's first ever three-time consecutive world champion. And this time, no one has been able to do it. Do you think Semi can do it tonight? Yeah, I, I know he can do it, but uh, I hope he won't. Okay. <laughs> That's another story, huh? That's another story. No, I mean, I mean, for me, it's of course, it's the best man must win. And, uh, if he can, if somebody can do it right now, it will be Semi. Champion Semi Schilt, 212 centimeters or six foot 11. He is so tall, giraffes are attracted to him. In front of the sold out Yokohama Arena, 20,000 strong. Quarterfinal number two, the winner of the face rock and roll, Jerome Labana. Cloud Bay Feitoza, can he overcome his nemesis? Feitoza, one of the real nice guys of K1. A good Brazilian. I like a good Brazilian, Ray. I used to say that to my ex-girlfriend all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> Feitosa, the hard training, all comes down to this. Against the defending champion, the strongest champion yeah! in K1 history. Yeah! Here we go, first round of three. Schilt, incredible cardio, extremely high work rate, and knows how to use his size. Laubay Feitosa does not want to be caught on the ropes against Semi Schilt. You have to back up Schilt to beat him. Go well, close to the ropes, he is very dangerous. There's the high kick from Laubay. Great start from the Brazilian. Will he throw the trademark Brazilian kick? Arguably the most exciting technique in all of K1. It's been interesting to note over the last year or so, working with Fight for the Boy, how the hands of Feitosa have improved, Ray. Well, his hands has improved a lot. Uh, the thing is, he doesn't use it enough, but he has phenomenal hands. It's just a matter of him putting it together with his feet. And interestingly here already, Ernesto, Semi Schultz has come out kicking a lot more than usual. Yeah, I, I was surprised. He's just a front kicker. I was surprised by the, by the, by the, by the, back, by the spinning back kick. And, uh, but yeah, Semi is, is a kicker, basically. And normally the response is he, he stops you, he's trying to stop you. I'm assuming, yes. he, I'm assuming he thought it worked with Mighty Marshall, so he tried it tonight. Right <laughs> <laughs> left round kick from Feintosa, Virgin's defense, nothing getting through. Semi pulls it back to center in, checks the low kick, one minute 40 remaining. The high knee, the big bock joy from Schilt, not getting through the guard. Inside thigh kick from Feitosa. Semi Schilt, the clear fans' favourite on internet polls worldwide on kakatongi.info. He really soared ahead on that worldwide poll. Second favourite was Peter Ertz, third favourite Jerome Labana, who is already through to semi final number one. Jab from Schilt. There's the Brazilian kick from Feitosa. Sticks the jab in the face, the overhand right. He's got to get out of there. Semi on the front foot is dangerous. And it goes Glauber in the corner. It's not where he wants to be. You've got to get out of there, Glauber. This is exactly what we've been working on for him to get out of those ropes, not to stand on the ropes, because every, time, every single time he's there, 
Sammy's got to catch him. And no matter what he throws, Pimenti's going to probably land. Sammy is trying for the high knee. There's the Ushiro Gary turning back into the midsection from Schilt. Karate technique. Snappy jab from the two-time champion. But as you can see, Sammy is fighting with so much confidence because I've never seen Sammy work like this before. Would you agree, Ernesto? Yeah, he works very good, and he, he's moving. He's, uh, he's closing the, the, the gaps for, for, for Glauber very good out. That's the thing we said earlier on about Semi. So many people dismiss him as being so good just for his height alone, but his work rate and his cardio is exceptional. And his ability to use that height and reach rate. Well, I mean, you know, he's impressed me tonight. I've never been impressed with Sammy Schultz. But in that round, he's actually showing me more things than he has in the past. I'd tell you what, that was just a dominating performance, and it is scary to think that Sammy Schultz continues to get better and better. Akebono, that was ownership by Sammy in the first round. Yes, as you can see, um, he's a total different fighter from home man, so even if they're almost the same size. Uh, he moves good, like you said, he has good cardio. Uh, he actually works angles and moves and he, he, he moves like he's a smaller guy. Ernesto, if you're in the corner of Cloudbait, what are you saying to him at the moment? Uh, what, I, what I would say is uh, that he had to keep on trying to get that overhand right because he hit him, uh, I think, two or, two or three times with the overhand right. And if he uh, kicks, if he gives that punch with, more, with some more con uh, confidence, then I don't know, then uh, he could... Uh, get some trouble for, for Sammy. Final instructions from Five no! Fulamoy and Francisco yeah! Filio in the corner. Here we go, second round of three. First round, lock it away. All one-way traffic for Sammy Schilt. Inside fly kick from Feitoza. I think I think Logan needs to be more aggressive now. He needs to, I mean, he's fit. I know he's fit because I trained with him. He's just got to put it all together now. Trying for the Brazilian kick, walks into a jab. Jab that Schult used to knock out Ray Seppel in this ring on March 4th. I'm sure we all know that, Mike. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. I'm throw it in there. <laughs> I still love you, my brother. I still love you. <laughs> Jab the game from Semi. There's a nice combination from Glaube. Left hook outside Feige. Semi returns the favour. Glaube's got some power. Oh, he's Be patient, Garvin, be patient. You gotta be, he's got to be patient there right now. Don't rush anything. Go back to the jab, wait to the body, and then go back to that head kick. Garvin Fantosa could shock the world! He wobbled semi shit with the Brazilian kick! Shoot coming forward, he was on rubber legs! And Fantosa back to how he was. Ray, did he not capitalize? I mean, right now, you know, as we know, Sammy's a fit, fit fighter. And right now, you know, Gene needs to jump on him. And that's, how that's twice that Kyle has caught Sammy with a kick to the jaw. Yeah, and, uh, and he knows what to do now. And he should try to overhand right more, in my opinion. And follow up with the left hook. Absolutely. A long time remaining in this round. One minute, 22. Kyle needs to get out, of that get out of the ropes and get out of that corner. Faitoza almost brought the house down. He almost shook the world. Nobody has ever knocked out Semi Schilt. Only one man in K1 history has ever knocked him down, and that was Sugar Ray Seppo. Oh, Semi Hopkins! Now they've been caught! Yeah, Semi really surprises us. What an amazing fight! Well, you know, <laughs> I've always said all along that Semi is just lucky because he's big. Tonight, and in this fight, in the last two rounds, he's showing the world that he has a whole lot of different arsenal. Spinning back kick, spinning hook kick, oh and so on. Fantos is in trouble, he's going to get out of the corner. He shakes it off for Brasilia, goes for the overhand right. The crowd rally attacks him with the left hook. Sammy Shield licked the leather on that occasion. 20 seconds remaining. This is one of the best rounds of K1 action we've seen this year. High knee again from Schilt. The Brazilian kick from Feitosa. High knee coming? No. Travis going to use his hands a little bit. Oh. End of the second round. I totally round. agree. What theatre, Ernesto? How did you devolve that second round? I mean, 
Yeah. Rambo had the advantage and he seemed to lose it. Yeah, I think so. I think I still think the, the, the round is basically semis. Although uh, since the kick, this is Glaube's kick, made it made it maybe a draw. Um, but I still think he, uh, he he can try the overhand right. Ray Sheffield, you've been tagged with that kick in training and sparring with Glaube so many times. What does it feel like to take one of those Brazilian kicks? Because it's awkward to read where it's coming from. It looks like it's going to the midsection, then whips over the top of the gloves. That's feels, right. Feels like going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never been tagged with it. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, luckily for me, I've always had my hands up. But I mean, you know, any kick is a tough kick to take. Um, Gene needs to work a little bit on his hands. I mean, he used to come out here, and now he's got to fight with heart. He's got to take it to Sammy, otherwise he needs to knock out a win. Mendoza is nowhere near done. He almost dropped Schultz in the second, and here we go in the final round. Schultz again opens up with a heavy artillery. On the front foot, the two-time champion. Mendoza needs to remain mobile. He can't be a stagnant target for Schultz to tee off on. Here's the left hook. Just not enough mustard behind it from Feitoza. Hook outside, fly kick from Schilt. Glauber's got to put together a bunch of combinations. He can't just throw one shot and hope that that would do the job. He's got to throw that left hook overhand right like the has been saying and follow again with another left hook. Fly kick from Feitoza, just whistled past the brow. Me coming, there it is. A lot of looks of concern over in the blue corner to Michi Keki. Nice leg check from Feitoza, turning back kick, whips past. Just millimetres away from the jawline of Semi Schilt. Two minutes remaining here in the final round. Feitoza with the inside thigh kick. I think Semi is doing very good. But since he's doing more, since he's working more, he also... Um, uh, his defence is, is less than, than before, in my opinion. Right. I need from Schilt. Akebono, it's Schilt in control here again in the third round. Well, you, you, you're watching him fight this fight and you know why he's a two-time champion going for his third consecutive one this year. He, he fights like a champion, he's, he relaxes, he knows what he has to do. And as we said, the scary thing is that he keeps improving year after year, tournament after tournament, with one of the other geniuses in his corner, Dave Yonkers. Feitoza moving around, one minute ten remaining now in the third and final. High knee from Semi, the one that he used to knock out Feitoza in the final in 2005. Late tie up, referee keeps it nice and clean. Jab from Schilt, just keeping Feitoza at bay. Feitoza goes to the overhand right, there's the high knee from Schilt. Rogers has got to go for goal right now. You know, he hasn't got much time, he's losing on points. But right now, he's just got to let it all hang out. He's got a throw punch combination and punch away until he drops. Feitoza may need to go for a Hail Mary shot. It may come off the Brazilian kick. It worked for him in the last round. High left round kick from Semi. It's now or never for Feitoza, Ernesto. Yeah, but uh, you got to give the give Semi credit. Uh, it keeps on working, and uh, yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's, if it's like this, it's very hard to stop. Feitoza backed up yet again. Semi should bring it home strongly. The high name. Oh! There it is. And in the third and final round, it was a great fight. Particularly that second round was an absolute corker. Ernesto, no doubt about it, though. We're going to see Semi and Jerome LeBanna in the first semi-final. Well, uh, it will be an interesting fight, seeing Jerome fight uh, like he did, seeing Semi fight like he did. I cannot say he's going to win that fight. Ray, I'm going to agree with Ernesto. It's going to be a hard one, given the way that we saw Jerome LeBanna move around the ring in his fight against Choi. The footwork was just spot on the money, and here, Glaube really lacked the footwork tonight. He did, you know, like we said earlier, uh, Glover was so ready in the gym and uh, it was just up to him tonight. But, I mean, you got to go back to Sammy. Sammy, I have never seen Sammy fight like that before. And that was phenomenal. So honestly, if, I mean, you know, uh, Jerome's going to have to pull out something special because in my opinion, I think Sammy's going to walk right through him. Well, two legends oh, were impressed by Sammy Shelton. I'm sure Akabono agrees. Judge him, he's over.
Now you know why he's a two-time champion going for his third consecutive decision. And once again, the two-time and defending K1 world champion is on his way. I take my hat off to cloud my faint toes if I was wearing my hat. He went the distance with Semi Shield. He almost dropped him in the second round. But once again, Shield just proved to be the arch nemesis of Fight Toes Array. Well, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've lost for words in a sense because um, I'm still shocked that Sammy came out and fought the way he did. He showed all of us that he could throw, and he, that he's at a different arsenal, he's got different weapons to his arsenal. And it's just, he's going to be very, very hard to stop tonight. You know what's coming up next, folks? The one the world has been waiting for. Maybe the most anticipated quarterfinal matchup in K1 Grand Prix history. The bad boy Connor Hurry and Remy Bunchaski. And he's back to the change rooms for Cloud Bay Feintosa. And it is through to the semi finals. For Semi Schilt. This is the one. We have all been waiting for, we are super excited about it. I know you are watching worldwide, especially live in Australia, a main event live in Canada on the Fight Network. It is Rudy Bajaski versus Bada Hari, quarter final number three, Morocco versus Holland. The bad boy Bada Hari, the smack talking 23 year old who is looking to become the youngest K1 champion in history here tonight. He is the human highlight reel. A devastating KO on Stefan Leko. That was back in 05. He broke the arm of Nicholas Tennis of Dynamite last New Year's Eve. He dropped Peter Green with a body train Hong Kong. He put the lights out on Mark Mark Correa here in Yokohama on March 4th. Every knockout is one for the highlight reel from the bad boy Carter Hurry. You may not like him, but you've got to respect him. He is the most naturally gifted athlete I have seen in K1 in a long, long time. And he takes on the flying gentleman, Remy Vinjaski. You talk about a seasoned campaigner. You talk about a man who knows how to win tournaments. And you talk about the former two-time champion, Remy Vinjaski. What really makes this fight interesting, Ernesto, is the war of words that have erupted over the last week. Butter Hurry came out and said he does not consider Remy a former K1 champion. Uh, he tries to, uh, to provoke, and uh, I think he, uh, he, he made something out of it all. And let's see uh, what we're going to see. Let, let's see what's uh, going to happen now. Well, he has certainly rolled up the usual classic Remy Bunjaski and what Bada Hari does best. Bunjaski versus Hari. The quarterfinal we've all been waiting for, and there's the two time former champion backstage. And Bada Hari, what a moment it is for him. He's only been on the K1 circuit for a short time. But my word, the last 12 months has been a good time for the bad boy from Morocco. Both these guys look really intense, right? Yeah, they are. They should be. I mean, after the war of words <laughs> in the last uh, two, three weeks, I'm pretty sure that um, it, they know now, you know, it's that time where, you know, words don't matter no more. It's a matter of coming out here and doing the job and showing the audience and the fans what they're made of and, what, and who wants to be the champion tonight. Two of the greatest knockout artists in all the world of fighting sports. Bunchaski flying knees versus the succulent skills, the long legs and long arms of the bad boy, the smack talking Bada Hari. Bunchaski with the great Ivan Hippolyte in his corner. Bada Hari with Mike Passigna and all the team from Mike's kid in his corner. 
in just a moment. These two arch rivals. There is no love lost between them. Will make their way to centre ring for quarter final number three. on the face of the Flying Dutchman, Remy Bunjaski. He's overcome a lot of personal hardships to be here tonight. His painful divorce, his mother passing away, splitting from the Majiro gym to now be training with one of the Dutch Muay Thai pioneers, Ivan Hippolyte. Bunjaski makes it to Centurion. The man with the flying knee says he wants to recapture his K1 crowd. But he's gonna go through the bad boy Bonner Harry to do it. It is the moment we've all been looking forward to. The biggest crunch quarterfinal in K1 history is about to be happening.
across the back of the t-shirts, the devil prince, but a hurry is in the house. Melvin, Vinny Tyson, Matt Holmes, Mike Pesenia, Saki him up in the corner. This is the one we've all been waiting for, Ray Ray. Absolutely. I mean, his team is so on about hyping him up. What about the down for? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure for the hurry shoot to it. And without a doubt, he looks like he wants to win tonight. I am so excited about this one. Will Harry give us another knockout? Will the human highlight real KO Remy Bajeski? Or will the experience of Bajeski shine through? Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. All right, fans, here we go. Quarterfinal action. We are scheduled three three-minute rounds. Introducing to you first on my right. He is fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks with gold trim, standing at 192 centimeters, he weighed in at 108.4 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time K1 World Grand Prix champion from Holland, known as the Flying Gentleman, introducing Remy Yes. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, standing at 197 centimeters. He weighed in at already 101 kilograms. Here is the K1 2007 heavyweight champion from Morocco, known as Akuma Oji, introducing Badder. Great ovation here for Bada Hari. He has really captured the imagination of the world. As the bad boy, Bada Hari. If he wins the Grand Prix here tonight, he'll become the youngest Grand Prix champion in history, beating Peter Erson's record when Ertz won it as a 23-year-old back in 1994. Bada Hari has 75% knockout ratio. Second only to Jerome Labana is the human highlight reel. Meanwhile, Remy Bunjaski a 48% KO ratio, but Bunjaski with that watertight defense. The only thing harder to get into than Bunjaski's defense is Fort Knox. This guy has only been stopped yeah! twice by Shilton yeah! and Crocom. And here we go. First round of three. Michael Chevello, Ray Seppo, Akibono, and the greatest in this focus with you inside. You know what, you know what I really like to do right now? It's being inside Uncle Manat's mind because he's trained both of these guys and he's sitting ringside watching. The professor is here, only a few feet away from us. Look out for the flying knees on Bonjaski. Look out for the long legs and that beautiful jab right hand of Bada Hari. Hari coming off a stunning second round knockout of Doug Viney in Seoul where he broke Doug's jaw on September 29. Before that, he decisioned Peter Graham in Hong Kong, knocked out Fujimoto in Honolulu, and knocked out Ruslan Karayev here in Yokohama in March. Jumping knee from Bonjaski, catch and kick from Badahari, and won't score for him under K1 rules. As we said, a lot of bad blood between these two men. The smack talking has been hard and fast from Badahari over the last two weeks. And he's riled up the usually complacent and placid Remy Bunjaski. Step up knee from Badahari. So far, this is a very technical fight, but as you can see, nobody is pulling any shots. There is certainly no feeling out process here in the first round of three. Nice front kick belly button through the back from Badahari. Left hook from Hari. As always, the very high guard of Bonjaski. He hasn't got the boxing skills of Badahari. He's certainly got the kicks and knees, has Bonjaski, and he's got the experience. But he looked to, to hit harder still. Harry, four punch combination, rip kick was caught on the gloves. Nice jab, just threading it through the defense. Inside thigh kick. Actually, Butters, uh, Butters boxing is also not that hard yet, but he knows the timing right. very well. It is almost surgical precision when he hits you with that right hand. Just ask Viney or Karayev. A front kick off the rear leg there from Hari. But Hari, obviously, you know, watching that uh, whole minute or last two minutes of the round, but I think it's a little bit quicker than Remy. He certainly looks like he's beating Remy to the punch. 
But then again, the punching is not the strong prowess of Bonjaski. It'll be when Bonjaski finds the opening to work the high kicks or the knees. Half a minute remaining here in the first round of three. Quarter final number three. The winner to face either Peter Ernst or Junichi Sawayashiki. Big outside fly kick chomping away at the lead quadricep area from Badahari. A lot of concentration in centre ring. A whipping high right round kick left hook from Hari goes to the rib cage. Here comes the bad boy. Here comes the devil prince. End of the first round, I think he stole it for mine, Ernesto. At least he, try, he tried to steal it, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I cannot see in the, in the judges' head, but uh, it looked very convincing. Akebono, how did you see the first? Well, it's like how he said before the fight, experience uh, against uh, emotion, and that's exactly what happened. Um, it's too close for me to call, I don't know. Sugar Ray? I would have to go with Badahari. Knowing the judges, I would say they would go with Badahari. <laughs> what are you laughing at down there? Yeah. So, yeah. Is that the two Oceania guys up this end of the table are agreeing? I think we're very experienced. <laughs> and that's a, yeah, both you and I. <laughs> <laughs> so, final instructions in the corner here. Yeah. Badahari from Elvin Manhoff and Mike Passinier. Meanwhile, Ivan Hippolyte in the corner of Remy Bonjaski, who's been training with Mirko Kronkop, one of his main sparring partners in preparation for tonight. Here we go, second round. Unofficially, you may lean in favour of Badahari after the first. Bonjaski is a tournament specialist. He knows what it takes to win. He's a big occasion fighter. And he comes out smoking, left hook outside, kicking. Inside guy kick from Hari, missed the target. Prince the jab again. I like to see Remy use his jab as well. Uh, left round kick. Right hand from Bada Hari, the straight line boxing prowess of Hari coming through. Upper cut, left hand, nicely timed. They both listen very careful to the to the turn mm, right here. Since I, since I talk Dutch. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, this is actually like a battle of Amsterdam. I mean, it's also for this prestige in the, in the, in the, in the nightlife in Amsterdam. Not that they're nightlifers, but I'm sure in the nightlife they're looking, they're really looking at this fight. Well, what did, what yeah. did you say? This fight would have been phenomenal to go down in Holland? For sure. <laughs> yeah, it would have been great, great fight. Who will be the king of the red light district after this one? <laughs> but a hurry or Remy Bunjaski at the moment, a very even second round. So we change the title now, huh? <laughs> right hand there from Hari. Not throwing any wild or uncalculated shots here, no, but no a matter, hurry. No matter what happened in the, before this fight, they're showing both respect for each other. They are indeed, and so much did happen. Chance go up now in one section of the crowd for Bada Hari. Digs away to the body, nicely done. That was Ernesto Who style punch. Yep. Side fly kick from Remy. I just think Remy hasn't actually picked up, you know, jumped on his game yet. I mean, right now he's just too busy waiting. Body shot, high right round kick, and again goes to the rib cage as Bada Hari checks the low kick. Remy's got those gloves. Stitched to his forehead. But Ahari just waiting for the opening. Turning left hook couldn't get through. The left hand hit him on the humorous bone, but there was nothing funny about it. Right hand from Bonjaski. There's a right from Badahari. Phil Bada looks a little bit more more active in this in this round. I have to agree. As Ray said, Bonjaski is just holding back a little too much. Still there in centre ring. I would have to say that, but I'm going to start blocking those low kicks because, uh, you know, if he thinks he wants to continue the next round, but there's a lot of bruising in their left leg. Caught on the forearms, the round kick from Hari. Checks the low kick on that occasion. There was a right hand in there from Bonjaski, but it had less weight behind it than Lara Flynn Boyle. Final seconds now of the second round of three. Body rip, inside thigh kick. Akebono, who did you score the second round to? Well, there's too much technical uh, stuff for me. Uh, <laughs> Let's go to the master then. Ernesto Hoost. Uh, it is pretty even, but uh, I, I think Bada was still a little bit more active. 
I'm not sure if it's enough to win the round, but uh, I would give it to him, I think. Sugar Ray? Absolutely, I would go with Bohar in that round. I mean, you know, Remy is doing what he's supposed to do. The only problem is for me is that he's not doing enough. Well, he's not countering. Right. Normally, when you hit him with the, with the hands, he's he's countering right away. But right now, right now, he doesn't do that that much. Now I'm wondering whether that has anything to do with part of speed. Maybe. Yeah. Just have a look over at Andre Manard, who is sitting ringside here, and I sort of said to him, Andre, who do you choose so far? He shrugged his shoulders. Too hard to call for Andre Manard, who has raced earlier. He trained both of these men. Here we go, third and final round. We've got but a hurry ahead on our unofficial scorecards. Three minutes for Remy Bonjaski to pick up the pace. <laughs> Jab two from Butter. Takes an outside fly kick. Nice very, very nice. This is more like the Remy Bonjaski, who's the former two-time K1 Grand Prix champion. And that's exactly what he needs to do to win this fight. Now he reacts on, on Butter, and this is what he should do. Right hand from Badahari, outside fly kick from Remy. That low kick hurt, I'm sure. Yep, I would have to agree with that. Caught on the forearms. Steady jab from Bunjaski. Shot to the bread basket, outside thigh kick to the rear leg from Badahari, then moves off to his right. Wild hooking punch from Bunjaski, shrugs off Harry. Jab, right hand again, just doesn't have the starch behind those punches. Got munching knee from Harry. But if Muay Thai in centre ring, referee keeps it nice and clean. Both men, backgrounds in Muay Thai. Good dipping right hand and the high right round kick from Harry. You know, it's kind of hard to, 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 try, to try and, you know, give advice to these two guys because they're both blind. You know, they're both doing what they're supposed to do. It is one for the purists, that's for sure, watching this contest. Two punches not getting through. The inside thigh kick slap reverberated across this massive arena. I think Bada, I think Bada Harris felt that kick again. It looks, it looks like he's limping. Yeah. Again, Remy just tenderizing that outside lead fire, but a hurry. It'll make Harry wish he played warm balls instead. Yep, there it is yep. again. Uh, he's, he's hurt. He's yeah, hurt. He's feeling right. that leg. Yeah. The lead leg of Bada Harry has taken more strikes than a bowling alley. From Jasky is scoring up the points, and there's still a long way to go. 45 seconds of the third round remaining. Jab from Bunjaski. Harry has slowed down here, Ernesto. He looks tired. He's breathing through his mouth. He's but a hurry. Hands are down around his waist. Will Bunjaski launch the flying knee? The first time Harry has ever faced a top-out fighter. His first time ever in the Grand Prix. Well, he now knows what it is. <laughs> that is very true. His first experience, and now he knows what it feels like. Not only to face a top opponent, but also if he wins this, he's going to go on to face another top opponent. And he tries to steal the round again. Oh, Harry's swinging for the ropes here in a final attempt to knock out Bonchaski. But he's gassed his brother, Harry. You look gassed. Wow. Look, yep. Third round, Ernesto. I've got to go the way of Bonchaski. Yeah, and, uh, Definitely. and looking, at, looking at it now, I really think uh, it could be a draw in an extra round. I'm going to agree with Mr. Perfect. I'll say a draw after three rounds. Sugar Ray. You know, after that last round, I, I think... I wish that Remy had actually done that in the first two rounds. But, to, to, you know, to make a decision, I would have to agree with Mr. Perfect. Akebono, as someone who is not as technically inclined as Ernesto or Ray, but you're looking at it from purely a fan's point of view, because I know you've been hanging out for this match. How do you see that one? Well, like I said, how many times with his uh, experience against uh, the young, uh, not scared of any, not afraid of anything mindset, the emotion. And both guys came out to me as a fan. I, I feel they did what they both had to do. One fought with emotion, one fought with the skill and technique. Interestingly here, Mike Pesinier just pumping his fist in the air in Badahari's corner. Remy pumping his fists in the air. Both have think they've won it here. 
And we could indeed go an extra round, Ray. Well, the fans are going to love an extra round. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Me too. One for Remy. One draw. He's done it! Remy Bronjewski has done it! Some shot looks in the corner of Badahari. One draw, two for Remy on this time. Yeah, well, I must say I don't agree with the judges. Maybe they see it from a different angle as I do. Uh, I don't think Bada lost the fight. Simple as that. From this result, Sugar Ray, as part of Lynch passed our commentary position, how did you see it? <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, that's a surprise. Um, but like I, you know, I said earlier, uh, or a couple of days ago, that for some reason I had this feeling that Remy was going to pull it off. But on the night, tonight, I would have to agree with Mr. Perfect that that was not a winner fight. I mean, it had to go the next round. I agree. It's the Grand Prix, you've got to take it by the throat. An extra round would have certainly determined that. Meanwhile, we are ready to roll into quarterfinal number four. You just saw Junichi Sawayashiki, the Miracle Man, warming up backstage as he sets to get on against a legend in Peter Ernst. This is quarterfinal number four. The winner will face Remy Bajaski. Will it be Ernst or will it be the Miracle Man, Junichi Sawayashiki? What a rejuvenation here it has been for the Dutch lumberjack Peter Ernst. He has been on a demolition mission. His knockout of Nicholas Pettis in Hong Kong was one of the most sickening sights I've ever seen. Ernst made it to the final last year. And he has been back in that killer form that he had. There's the knockout of Pettis in Hong Kong. We thought Nicholas Pettis was dead. He almost decapitated him. Here he is taking out the legs of a sick Ray Seppo in Seoul in the elimination. The three-time K1 World Champion, the only man to have competed in every single Grand Prix since its inception in 1993, is back for a 15th time. He takes on Junichi Soyashiki, who is the five to one underdog shot the world here on March 4. But he knocked down the banner twice and defeated the Batman Cyborg to be shot a household name overnight. If Soyashiki can replicate that against Earth, well, he will bring the house down and he will shock the world. He knocked out Nicholas Vermont in Amsterdam. He defeated Randy Kim in Honolulu. He took care of business against Fujimoto in Seoul. He is undefeated in his five-fight career. Three wins by knockout for the Miracle Man, Junichi Sawayashiki. A savage second-round KO win over the Japanese cannon Fujimoto in Seoul to qualify here tonight. The young sensation, Sawayashiki, is backstage and he is ready. Talking to him yesterday, he's a very humble man. And he said, I don't know if I really stand a chance of beating Peter, but I know I want to make the fight a costly one for Peter Ertz. Ertz is Sawayashiki's hero. He has followed Peter Ertz since being a boy back in 1993 when Ertz first competed. Since 94 when Ertz first won the Grand Prix. And tonight, Sawayashiki faces his boyhood idol. What a huge moment it is, Ernesto, for Junichi Sawayashiki taking yeah. on a man he has idolized for 15 years. Yeah, well, uh, he has a great opportunity. And uh, he knows everybody will be uh, thinking that Peter is going to beat him. So he has nothing to lose. And I was, I was still impressed by the way he fought uh, with Fujimoto. And uh, I think yeah, you always have a chance. And uh, if he goes for it, you never know. 37 years old of Peter Ernst, 23 years old of Junichi Sawayashiki. 
Will it be the walkover that most everyone thinks it will? Or will Junichi Sawayashi here yet again shock the world? We'll find out in a few short moments. Quarter final number four. Who will face Freddie Majeski in semi final number two? For the official introductions, let's go across to Kimmy Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for quarterfinal bout number four. Introducing you at this time, joining us from the blue stage, from Japan, introducing Junichi Sawayashiki. Goes the touch from the jack. The legend, 
For Peter, it's the legend. The referee calls both men in for the final instructions. Ertz, a 71% KO ratio. Soyashiki, a 60% KO ratio. The Japanese fighter is undefeated in a short but brilliant five fight K1 career. Peter Ertz, the only man to have fought in every Grand Prix since 1993, and the fastest Grand Prix champion in history. When in 1998 he won the GP in only six minutes and 43 seconds. All first round knockout. The last time he won it back in 98. Here we go. First round. The voice, Michael Chabello, ringside with the greatest, Ernesto Hoost, Akebono, and Sugar Ray Sheffield. Peter Roach opens up like a house of fire. He'll look to manhandle and bully Sawayashiki. And Hurts is a nasty fighter. He'd send the get well letter to a hypochondriac for no reason. So Yashiki's got to keep his gloves up. Oh, he's dropped it! The big kibosh! The big kibosh! And the opening 20 seconds! So Yashiki's astral travelling! He gets back to his feet! This place has gone bananas! I told you Ertz was going to pounce on him! I told you he's nasty! So Yashiki just a slip on that occasion! Did you see that? He landed a left hook before he fell. Ertz is looking to beat him in record time here. A high left round kick from the Lumberjack. He's got more kick than a can-can dancer. He doesn't see should relax a little bit right now. I mean, he knows he's got him hurt, so he's going to relax a little bit and go back to the basics and do what he does best. Ertz, who has been in devastating form in the lead-up to this one. He knocked out Bob Sapp in Amsterdam in only 35 seconds. Oh, cut munching knee, belly button through the back. Kick up the clacker. His timing, his timing is so good. I'm sure that this young player. Oh, oh, the big kibosh has gone down the rain. Open the fridge, he's out cold. So Yoshiki was sent back to 1984. Whoa, Ernesto, what a right hand. That was a big right hand. Right right George, George Orwell George Orwell is. Very jealous now. <laughs> Unbelievable! We told you he was in the world of war in 1998. He has shown it again. A devastating first round knockout of the highest order. Like we said earlier, he was hungry for this event and uh, he showed it right there and there. Well, forget the life insurance. I hope that Janice's got good dental cover after that one. Smack bang on the kisser as only Peter Ernst can do. And we are set for a dream semi-final number two. Ertz versus Bonjaski, an all-Dutch battle. I'm still getting over that one. That was just an awesome, awesome performance, Ray. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, it was no surprise to me, and I'm sure it's no surprise to all of us, that Peter was going to come back and do exactly what he did. I mean, we talked to him a few days ago. He's ready, he's hungry, he's strong. This kid has very limited experience in the ring, despite the top fighters, the, the best of the best. And today, he felt like it was like to fight one of the best of the best. It was one minute and 29 seconds into the first round where P. 
Peter Ertz through the big right hand that dropped and took out Junichi Sawayashiki. The Japanese fighter took more shots than an alcoholic in a very short period of time. And Peter Ertz in his 15th K1 Grand Prix is once again on his way and perhaps on his way to immortality. It is one for the highlight reel. Puts the nose through the back of the head of Sawayashiki. And trying to figure out how to beat Peter Ertz when he's fighting like this is like trying to figure out why soap and a rope was ever a good idea. <laughs> he is on the money yet again. Sawayashiki being helped backstage. I go to my special comments, guys, and our semi-finals are set. Introducing you first on my right, by hand of the low corner, wearing black trunks, he made his way to the semi-finals with a unanimous decision win earlier tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Semi And his opponent across the ring on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, making his way to the semifinals also with a unanimous decision victory earlier tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting Jerome LeBanner! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All we know about him is that he looks a lot like Thierry Henry, the French soccer star. David Dan Gray comes here tonight to try and knock out Musashi. Can he do it? We'll see in just a moment.
number one Japanese fighter anymore, but he certainly still is Japan's favourite fighting sign. With former WBA super middleweight champion Frankie Lyles in the corner, Musashi makes his way to centre ring. As we said earlier, a make or break fight for Musashi here tonight. And it's been a hellish year for Musashi. He lost to Fujimoto, he's been for the K1 World Heavyweight title fight. And then he had that groin strike fest against Yong Su Park in Hong Kong. And Musashi wants a knockout, and knockout in style, taking Terry Gray here tonight. Gray Ray, we were talking to Frankie Wiles at the hotel yesterday, and even Frankie says Musashi has to win this one and win it well. Yeah, he does. He does have to win it well. And, you know, as you were uh, mentioning about how much of a bat he has, I know all about that. So, but right now, he's got to face a guy, and he's got to be in the ring, so he's got to be able to put that aside and, you know, do what he does best, and that's to throw down and fight and win. I mean, on the flip side of this, this guy, I mean, what a dream come true for this guy. You know, and nobody, no one has heard of, and tonight he's fighting in the Grand Prix. And he makes his debut on the biggest stage of all the Thai arm band around the right arm of Dan Gray tells us he's probably a Muay Thai stylist, so soon as the Thai riding on his yellow tracks. 20,000 on hand here in the sold-out Yokohama Arena in Japan as the King of Bling, Masashi, makes his way onto the apron. He goes through the ropes, and we are set for our super fight. Japan versus France. Masashi versus David Dan Gray. Sado versus Muay Thai. Fighting out of the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, 188 centimeters, 92.7 kilograms. He's a Thai boxing 2004 French champion. Musashi of Japan and David Dan Crade of France. Two knockdowns in one round in place under super fight rules. Three by three, one extra round in case of a draw. Musashi needs the victory here tonight. Over David Dan Crade. Dan Crade has the height. He's also got the longer arms. He's got the reach over Musashi. Musashi, who has really linged up in recent times, especially as he had that crack at the K1 World Heavyweight title that Badahari went on to win after Fujimoto knocked Musashi out of the bidding process with a lethal high right round kick. That was here in Yokohama. It hasn't proven a happy hunting ground for Musashi. Can he change the trend over the next nine minutes? Dan Craig looking very relaxed on the biggest stage of all. Musashi who's got more hair product than Bon Jovi. And he is ready to go. Here we go, first round of three. The voice, Michael Chevello, ringside with Akabono, Ernesto Hust, and Sugar Ray Seppo. High right round kick from David Dan Crane. Musashi fighting southpaw. Last couple of fights, we've seen a return to the old Musashi style, the more Citadel defensive style. Hasn't relied on his hands as much. He's got a beautiful rear leg round kick to the rib cage. Has Musashi. We'll see if he unloads it here on David Dan Crane. As we were saying earlier about you know taking your time and assessing out, see what you know his opponent's got to bring. Uh, Musashi's doing exactly that because he hasn't thrown a thing yet. As we said, the only thing that Musashi has seen of Dan Crane was a photo on his cell phone as of two days ago. 
There are no highlights of Dan Craig from Masashi and Frankie Lyles to have researched. Nice evasion there from Masashi. Tries for the inside lead thigh of the Muay Thai stylist. Good double forearm guard from Musashi. You can see that obviously this guy likes to kick. He loves the legs. And already more kick than a chorus line for David Dan Craig here in the first round. Uh, Musashi should put uh, more pressure. And uh, he's waiting too much at this moment. Spinning back heel kick there from Dan Craig. Certainly doesn't seem nervous on his K1 debut as Dan Craig. Well, no, I wouldn't be either. I mean, you know, he's got nothing to lose. He's fighting on the biggest martial arts circuit in the world. And, uh, you know, he can only gain uh, either a comeback, you know, and, and compete again in the K1 circuit uh, or a contract. So, you know, he's, he's got everything to uh, gain, nothing to lose. Both men just testing the waters here at the moment, seeing what each other has to offer. And there's already some red swelling on the left rib cage of Musashi, courtesy of those round kicks from Dan Cray. Close to the outside lead thigh is Dan Cray. That being the right thigh of the southpaw Musashi. 40 seconds remaining here in the first round, set for three by three. Nice high right round kick from Dan Cray and a good high guard from the Frenchman. I think Musashi's problem is, is that he doesn't combine the punches with the kicks. He's got to stop either throwing he, the single shots in this though. Either he do, yes. Either he makes a, pun, a punch or a kick. Now he should proceed, but he, he stops. It takes his time too much. Also looking a little flat-footed here is Musashi. Not really moving around with the balls of his feet. No, not at all. I think maybe because he, now, he has, now he knows what he's got. You know, he's, he's dealing with a guy who's yeah. just kicking and so... Um, <laughs> he's just taking his time. Oh, rib kick from Masashi! That's the one I told you to watch out for! The real leg of Masashi! And Dan Craig is hurt here! He's not going to make the count! That's over. It's good night, Irene! Masashi by a first round kick knockout over David Dan Craig! And as I dare say, he's busted the ribs here of Dan Craig. I think so. It uh, looks like an old Masashi. And that just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like I said it earlier on, that's the prime weapon of Masashi, that real leg round kick to the rib cage. Well, you know, we were talking about he's not working too much. He's taking his time. He needs to, you know, uh, proceed forward and, and keep put the pressure on. But, <laughs> you know, as we've seen many a times, that it only takes one shot. And, you know, Masashi proved that by landing that out full body yeah, yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah, yeah, sadistic yeah, grin on your face yeah, like a bono yeah, because yeah, as a fan i know you yeah, love yeah, that kick knockout yeah, that's a big guy that hurt me too <laughs> so, uh, i hope you didn't have a big breakfast this morning david dan craig masashi just kicked the scrambled eggs out of his stomach <laughs> Two minutes and 59 seconds well, right on the buzzer. Well, those scrambled can probably, you know, <laughs> blend into his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked the croissants out of him. So great victory there for Masashi. Oh, he is in the winner's circle with another ribbon what a, KO. What a juicy story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought I was the king of the clean shows. <laughs> Mr. Sefa, Mr. Who's to take you over here? <laughs> hey, we're learning from the master. <laughs> I'm going to get Akabona to clothes on your boat if you're not careful, all right? <laughs> so well done to Masashi. Looks of jubilation on the face of Frankie Lyles in his corner. Boxing Hall of Famer. The ridiculously large trophy for this super fight. And Masashi yes. once again in the winner's circle. Folks still to come here tonight. Our main event, the big one, the whole world. We'll be watching Simi Schilt versus Peter Ertz in our final matchup is only moments away. And you can bet that when the two-time and defending K1 champion meets the three-time champion with the make it four, this house is going to explode. How exciting is that with the four-time champion watching? <laughs> can be more, can, can be more exciting. Four times champion is super. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to ask you though, Anista, although you've been retired for some time now, you still get the itchy knuckles sitting here inside watching the Grand Prix. I mean, you know, this is the house that you and Peter Ertz built. Yeah, that's very right. And uh, I mean, I just know it's my, it has been my time. I had my time in it for 22 years. I must say, I look at it with pleasure, but I don't, I don't miss being there myself. I mean, I think it has been enough. I and mean, after after I quit, I was like, this is enough, and uh, it should be like this. Well, no one achieved more in the sport than the greatest sitting with us here inside. It's a pleasure, as always, to have Ernesto Hoos lending his comments as Musashi's team make their way back to the dressing room. What a hurry there inside with Simon Rutz, the K1 Amsterdam promoter. A very happy Masashi who made easy work of David Tan Crate. A scintillating rib kick on two minutes and 59 of a three minute round. You know, cut it more fine than Masashi did with that knockout. Wherever you're watching it, folks, around the world, we have been broadcast to more than 110 countries around the planet, including live in Australia on main events, the Fight Network in Canada and beyond. We hope you're enjoying it just as much as we are here ringside from the sold-out Yokohama Arena, the biggest fight event on the planet, the Fields K1 World Grand Prix. feel the tension here start to rise the mercury is starting to escalate as our final is only seconds away the touch lumberjack peter Ertz and the human high tower semi shot that's how they got there shoot defeated faint toza and then the banner to make it through the high tower has looked so impressive incorporating new weapons into his arsenal, as we saw against Glaube Feintosa in the first quarterfinal. The match against Lebanon was one for the ages. Lebanon was beating semi shoots all the way until Schultz tagged him in the second round with some good headshots and then crept away at the right knee. Lebanon went down, the corner threw in the tag. The Batman Cyborg could take no more. Semi should make it through to his third consecutive K1 final. In quarterfinal number four, Peter Earth absolutely steamrolled through a hapless Sonia Shiku. Inside of two minutes, it was the Peter Earth of old. Sonia Shiki took more blows than a box of Kleenex. against Remy Lajaski. This was a very solid fight. Peter has dominated the first two rounds. Remy seemed to come on strong at the end of the second. He powered up in the third round. But Ertz had his measure and took the victory. And now we have set Ertz and Schultz in the final. Backstage, Peter Ertz and Semi Schultz are ready. Either way, history is going to be made. Either Schultz will become the first ever three-time consecutive champ, or Urs will equalize Ernesto's record. Our live band here. Still alive. Yeah. It was a loud firework pop. <laughs> my, my headphones are up to full volume. Uh, <laughs> everybody thought a bomb just went off. Unbelievable. It's all part of the pop and pageantry. That is the K1. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, 
and K1 fans joining us around the world, live from Yokohama, it's time for the main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, entering the ring from the blue stage, we have the three-time champion from Holland. Please welcome Peter. <laughs> I mean, I can feel the chills going through my body right now. And I can just feel that Peter is so focused and so concentrated in, you know, what he's got to do in there against someone like Sammy. I mean, you know, my hands, my fingers, my toes, I'm caught for him because I would love for him to pull it off and be the winner tonight. You are not the only one. Everybody I think in the fighting world besides Sammy Schultz's corner and would want to see Peter Earth win this one. Would want to see him join the best of who and the four-time champion. He looks mentally prepared for it, Desert. He had a bit of a battle against Rudy Grzeski. But he looks okay. What a moment it is in the history of this great fighter. A true legend. The atmosphere here is just incredible. You can cut it with a chainsaw. Over the ropes goes the London Jack. This place is alive. It's a happening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is his opponent. Joining us from the red stage, we have the two-time champion from Holland. Please welcome Semi Schill.
to decide who is the king of kings. All right, fans, here we go. This is it, our final scheduled three three-minute rounds. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, standing 192 centimeters. He weighed in at 112.1 kilograms. He made his way to the finals with a first round knockout victory and a unanimous decision win. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the three-time K-1 World Grand Prix champion from Holland, introducing the Dutch Lumberjack, Peter And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, standing 212 centimeters, he weighed in at 133.2 kilograms. He made his way to the finals with a unanimous decision win and a second round knockout victory. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time and defending Fields K-1 World Grand Prix Champion from Holland, introducing Sammy Shields. Third man in centering, the legend, the Blanky Kakuda. 20,000 sold out here at the Yokohama Arena. What the world has been waiting for, the final of the Fields K-1 World Grand Prix. 2007, the 15th Grand Prix that Peter Ertz has competed in. Michael Chabello, Ernesto Hoos, Ray Seppel and Akebono with your ringside. Schilt, the two-time and defending champion with a 44% knockout ratio. Peter Ertz, the legendary three-time champion with a 71% knockout ratio. Takuda gives the final instructions and we will be set for this grudge match to settle the score and more importantly decide who will be the K1 King of Kings. It's an all Dutch battle. It's a legend versus the strongest champion ever. And now it's a happening and the time for tour is over. Here we go. Front kick from Simi in a jab. Wild hook and punch from Ertz. It's settled here that Peter Ertz is probably the only man with the weapon, the size, the aggression, the power to stop the shield. We will see over the next nine minutes. Peter just landed a nice lift hook. What I like for him to do a little bit more is actually go to the body first and come back upstairs. Looks to me like Peter Ertz is trying to do a race Sifo here in the first round. Get on the inside and land the left hand. Outside cry kick from Semi just a sleep and Ertz smiles. Semi looking very eager here in Sinsarin. And Esto, how are you seeing it so far? Uh, I see the same. I think uh, Peter, but Peter said he's putting a uh, very good pressure. I saw uh, Semi limping in his, on his left leg. And I think uh, Peter's going to aim for that. I need from Semi, and just like Ernesto says, Peter goes for the outside left thigh. Schilt brings her back to center ring. Peter can't just walk in there like that. He's got to work up his jab to close the gap and then fire the big shots upstairs. If he just walks in, he's going to eat that jab all night. I made that mistake in the second round in our encounter. And uh, so, you know, he, does, he can't afford to do that also. He's still eating it in your dreams. <laughs> oh, no, you, you, you know, the one thing I can tell you right now, I mean, Sammy, I'll take nothing away from Sammy, but I can't wait to fight Sammy again. And that's the honest truth. They're not dreams in this day, they're nightmares. Yeah, they're, they're, exactly. <laughs> jab from Sammy. Jab again. He's caught him with the jab. Oh, he's the his ankle. It's the ankle of his ankle. Oh, oh, no, this is tragic. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Oh, no. Tragedy! The jab from Semi Shield, either the knee or the ankle, has been twisted on Peter Ernst. And Semi Shield is the first ever three time consecutive champion. It's the knee. Yeah, it is actually his knee. One minute and 41 seconds. Twisted it. Wow. What devastation for Peter Ernst. 
and it shows his light and his mind, his strength. Peter Edge is doing the canvas, and this time, what did you think of that? What happened there? Yeah, I couldn't see exactly what happened. He might have had uh, problems already or something, uh, otherwise I cannot declare what, what happened. Well, Ertz is still down here in center ring. It's his right leg, it looks to be the right knee. Ringside position is looking over it, but Ertz is in a very bad state. Maybe he's torn a ligament, maybe the knee has popped out. And it looks to be a jab, and then Ertz may be twisted and found the canvas. We'll find a replay very shortly. As they're still looking over Peter Ritz. Here we go. Take us through it, right? Well, right now, he just, we, know, we were talking about that jab. But he puts the foot down and right. it buckles. Exactly. And I think from also that canvas part of the canvas, I think it slipped. His ankle slipped off there. And his knee went. He went to put weight on I his knee. I think something like that, yeah. I you think know? it was the canvas. Because with all the... With all the Commercial things on the on the canvas. Right. It makes it very slippery. He, he found it right away. Sammy Schultz addressing the crowd as you see the replay. Well, that is unfortunate for Peter Ertz. Twisted his leg and the right knee. He's back on his feet now, though, Ertz. Okay. Okay. He says, he says hi to his mom. Oh, uh, Simi saying hello to his mom, to his mother. <laughs> Bas Boone, Dave Yonkers, the team from Golden Glory are elated. Peter Ertz is being helped out of the ring meanwhile. That was very unfortunate because, you know, before that happened, it looked like he was actually sticking his game plan. He was landing the jab, landing the body shots and just, you know, even landing the left hooks. How do you see that the fight would have progressed, Ray, if that had not occurred? Oh, honestly, if Peter continued that for the first, for the three rounds, without a doubt in my mind, he would have won it. Akebono, a disappointing result there for Peter Ernst. It was certainly looking good early on. It was looking to be just a blockbuster main event. Well, from a technical point of view, uh, like Ray was saying, he had to jab and uh, come in instead of just walking straight in and put the jab. He was measuring him with the jab. Like you say, good point from a technical point of view. Yes, from a technical point of view. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We've got a world first. And that's so devastating yeah. for Peter Ernst, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, and yeah, okay, but uh, Sam is the strongest again. And uh, it's still, the story is still, I guess, who, who will stop the shield next year. I don't to be the one to say what we might be thinking. Maybe a bit of a shallow victory for Sydney Short, given the way it ended. Well, you know, I mean, uh, that, that's a tournament. That can happen in a tournament. You know that. And uh, he might have uh, problems with his uh, with his leg. Uh, the point, the, the, the thing is that uh, Jan Plus, his trainer, came to me to ask me the the anti the, the, the grip spray for under his feet uh, because it was so slippery uh, in the in the on the, on the campus. And uh, too bad, it was so stupid. My, my one of my one of my guys, he, he forgot it in the hotel, and that might have been something that helped could help him. Well, history is again unravelled here in Centre Ring as Mr. Sadaharu Tanakawa, the CEO of FEG K1, presents Semi Schultz with the winner's clerk, and it's made all official. The 2005, 2006, and now 2007 Fields K1 World Grand Prix Champion, the sport's first ever three-time champion, is Semi Schultz-Holland. The winner's cup is Amazing scenes here at the Yokohama Arena. A horde of photographers have climbed up onto the apron. To get their shots for tomorrow's newspapers. The belt around the waist, the super heavyweight title belt around the waist of Semi Schilt. He won that title belt when he knocked out Ray Seppo here in Yokohama. And here's the K1 Grand Prix crown. Brother, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> Come on, come on, you've been, you've had with me all night. <laughs> Nevertheless, we are here. It is and a fact. It is. <laughs> the gold around the neck.
Oh, that's one Mr. T would be proud of. Have a look at that. Simi Schultz is officially crowned the 2007 Fields K1 World Grand Prix Champion. And he takes the US $400,000 winner's check. The richest prize of its kind in the world. And as you said, Ernesto, yep. 2008 once again is going to be the year. Who can stop the Schultz? I mean, that will, I think that will be the, the topic of, uh, of next year. You have so, to Ray, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to what? admit, though, Ernesto, yeah. that a few guys did come close tonight. Jerome was looking exceptional yep. before his leg injury. Yes, that's Lau Bay almost dropped semi shoot with a Brazilian kick. Yeah. And Peter was looking great before his injury. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, of course, uh, everybody knows Sam's is strength. I think also everybody goes to the, the ring with, 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 a, with a huge determination to beat him. And that's what you could see tonight. And also, Ray, you've got to give credit, though, to Simi Short. As we said earlier on, he showed a lot of new techniques, a lot of new weapons in his repertoire that really impressed us, especially against Cloud Bay Bay Toza earlier on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we go back to what we said. The thing is, what I realized when he came out to press the uh, Toronto Banner, he was a totally different fighter. He was the Simi Short of all. You know, that sits back and, and kind of wait. Well, I think confidently he knew he could actually walk over Jerome, uh, over Glover, so therefore he pressed with action. Again, we go back when he fought Mighty Mo. I mean, Jeremy Shields doesn't throw X kicks, spinning kicks, you know, back kicks and whatever. And today he did that with uh, Glover Petoja, and that's the only fighter he did it with. So the question is, does he only do that when he's confident to, of, to who he's fighting? Who will stop the Shields? That is the question we are all asking. I'm sure you're all asking around the world. And Simi Schultz becomes an historic third time. Three consecutive titles for Simi Schultz. Folks, we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have here from the Yokohama Arena. And so you and I have had some great moments this year commentating all over the world. Yes, we're let's here do it in next March, year we're in Honolulu, we're in Amsterdam. We'll be back for 2008. Thank yes, you very much. Thank you. Akabono, as always, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here with us inside. Thank you. As long as anytime you need my technical advice, let me know. Definitely. Give <laughs> us some technique. I can learn something from you at the bonus. And my brother from another mother, Ray Seppo. Great as always, brother, to have you here. Well, it's a learning experience and it's always phenomenal and a pleasure to be here and be part of it all. And, then, you know, and again, having to sit next to a legend like Anessa Hoos, or Yokozuna, another legend in Sumo, the legend of the mic, the voice. Thank you, sir. So, you know, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, there you have legend it, of the sugar food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. We have certainly had an enjoyable night. Our champions in centering our fighters. We have had an absolute ball calling the action for you. For the likes of Hongman Choi, Glaube Feitosa, Jerome Lebatta, Zoe Yashiki, Bonjaski, Matahari, it's back to the drawing board. It's back to the heavy duty training. And another assault on the title in 2008. For Semi Schultz, well, he continues to go from strength to strength. Just when we thought we'd seen the best of Semi Schultz last year, he steps it up another notch. He rages the mark even higher for every K1 competitor around the globe to try and aim towards. And you can bet the competition is going to come thick and fast in 2008 for Semi Schultz. But he ruled tonight. It belongs to him. The kudos go to the high tower from Holland and rightfully so. Bada Hari has thrilled us all year. So is Sami Yashiki. Hongman Choi, well, it's always great to see him in centre ring. Jerome Lebanon looks so sharp here tonight, but again, always the bridesmaid of K1. Paul Slominski did the Aussies proud. A great victory over Mighty Mo. And they're all of our combatants in the ring. As this crowd just gives their applause for the finest martial artists, kickboxers, boxers, Muay Thai fighters, and K1 combatants on the planet who have made up the field's K1 World Grand Prix for the 15th time. Folks, from myself, the voice, Michael Chevello, my verbal sparring partners, Sugar Ray Seppel, the 64th Yokozuna Akebono, and the all-time greatest, Ernesto Hoos. Thank you for joining us ringside from the Yokohama Arena in Japan.
We hope you've enjoyed it just as much as we have. We'll see you at Dynamite on New Year's Eve. What should be a magnificent show. And then until 2008, it's goodbye from us.